So let's look at this painting by Fragonard. In an earlier video, I talked about Watteau. Watteau was from the early 18th century. Fragonard finishes the 18th century. And in a way, he's sort of the final fruit of the late Baroque Rococo uh, tradition of painting. After him, um, yeah, I think he died right at the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, neoclassicism had sort of washed away all of that earlier tradition. Though Fragonard and his approach to painting had been out of style for some time by the time he passed away. So I want to look at this painting because it brings to light the idea that a painting can be constructed as if it were a jigsaw puzzle. The foliage on the sort of upper left, the dark value, swings around and then comes to the lower left and up. And the forms themselves emerge from this movement. And thus the female figure is, is, as much as she is a drawing of something, she is also part of a larger element and a, and a part of a larger pattern. And this sense is, can be seen as sort of an abstract piece, a puzzle piece in a larger jigsaw puzzle. I got this idea of looking at a, at a painting as a jigsaw puzzle from Paul Rhodes. He wrote a book on painting, and I'll put a link to the uh, PDF below. The title of the book is What is Art? And Paul says about the Titian painting, In this painting, each shape, whether part of a figure or the landscape, is like a puzzle piece which fits together with others to create the form. The form itself is at the heart of the appeal. Any shifting would destroy the form. Note the head of the central figure. It's, it forms a dark shape against a passage of lighter ground, while the body is a lighter or more intense shape against darker ground. In this manner, all the colors and shapes engage each other to generate the form. This form remains operative even if the painting is turned upside down or when we abstract from the subject. When a bougaro is turned upside down, it becomes incoherent because there is no form in the proper sense. When Paul mentions bougaro, he's talking about the fashionable academic painters in the end of the 19th century. And he's also pointing towards a tendency in art that began in sort of the mid to late 18th century, then sort of hit full fruition uh, by the time, again, of the eight, end of the 19th century. So with that in mind, let's look again at the Fragonard painting. Here you, you can see the same thing with the figure, where it's, the background is light, the figure is dark, and then when that, there's an interchange in the values where the background becomes dark and the figure becomes light. And you also see a pulsation of value, a light value to illuminate the spaniel and drapery. Note also the design of little notes of red in the drapery that match up with the color on the, of the uh, girl's clothing. And this is an important point, that the figure is, isn't drawn and then the rest of the painting sort of filled out around it, but it's the opposite. It's that the painting is sort of built, and then the figure sort of gets welded into these uh, sort of pre-existing um, large interactions of value. It's all one form. So here's another painting by Fragonard where the, this form of organization is so clear. Um, and again, it's like puzzle pieces or even, you know, you can, I can see it as sort of stacking values on top of each other, uh, a bit like the uh, diagram from Hans Hoffman. Right? Uh, but instead of creating form via planes, it's just sort of alternations of uh, values. 
for example, in Mary's, uh, around her portrait, it's dark, and then there's the lightness of her portrait, and then the darkness of her hair. It's almost like there's a, again, like putting black and white pieces of construction paper on top of each other that create a bas-relief of value. And this approach to having a value structure really favors a painterly approach to design because the painting achieves space via the sort of, again, the bas-relief of color, bas-relief of value, which create space. It's not like if a painting relies heavily on aerial perspective to get a sense of distance, you know, the colors sort of drain miles and miles into the painting, where this creates space, distance, but the distance never gets too far from the surface. It's a topic for another video, uh, the sort of balance between the surface and the space, the, the pattern and the distance, but I want to bring it up while looking at these Fragonard paintings because they illustrate the point perfectly. So this is the final Fragonard we can look at. So here you have this movement. It's almost like a C uh, on the upper left, down to the lower right, and up a bit. And then the female figure is sort of leaping through it. In herself, she's a she sort of experiences this interchange, whereas it's dark at the bottom, she's lighter and a more intense color, then she herself darkens down as she sort of leaps into the large light element. And another thing to look at is how the sort of coolish gray midtone that's, that's on the upper right sort of flows backwards. You can sort of see underneath the female figure that there's some it pushes back into space that direction, but it also pushes back, it also pushes forward and connects with the uh, boy's clothes. So it's this really interesting effect. And you, you get something very similar with the, the light yellow, the way it moves around as its own element in the painting. The yellow moves through the figures, through the space as its own thing. And it ultimately serves to stabilize the painting. There's already so much movement, movement of figure, movement of design. And the fact that the yellow is sort of spread all around the surface of the painting keeps it together and binds it together to give it a sense of organization. And finally, uh, I don't wish to dissuade anyone from thinking that subject matter isn't important. It's very important, and I'll do a video on the imp my thoughts on subject matter and how that really fits into traditional painting.